Hi, you guys. So it's tip number three in your weekly celebration of International Yoga Day. I'm giving you my top seven yoga tips, and today is day three. We are continuing on a little bit from yesterday's topic in how do I meet and greet the earth, whatever I'm touching with my hands and my feet, whatever is touching the earth in the yoga posture, be just paying attention to and being aware of how I meet and greet the earth and connect to the earth. Can I, do I just sluggishly drop my weight into it or do I play off that resistance of the earth and use it for support? And most of the time we are in our either our hands or our feet in many of our yoga postures. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today specifically is how to get all up in your hands and juicy and all up in your feet and your toes all the way up into the very tips and tips tips of the fingertips and all the way up into the very tip 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 of the toes because oftentimes what i see in my students in their practice what i feel in my own practice and what they report to me that they're feeling is that we often rock either back in the heels of our hand mostly in planks and down dogs and we're staying in this part of our hand and we're forgetting all this part like from here up we're not even engaging in and activating in really or we're resting and rocking back either in the heels of our feet or if we tend to be forward people in the balls of our feet and so this is just about starting to wrap your head around when I'm in a downward dog or plank pose when I'm in a pose where my hands and my feet are primarily the things that are touching the earth to support me where am I at in my hands and my feet? Am I coming all the way up into the fingertips? Am I activating that kinesthetic awareness and all that those beautiful balance features and strength features all the way up into my fingertips and toes? Or am I just hanging out right down here in the ball of my hands or the heels of my feet? And so I'm gonna go into a few helpful tips for you to start to get out of the heels of the feet and out of the uh, balls of the hands and into the rest of your hands and feet. So I want to talk to you about a little concept called bandhas. In yoga we have these bandhas there. Um, you have like the mula bandha is the root bandha or root lock or support. I want you to think of them not as locks but supports. So a, a way to think of this in terms of western thinking uh, in the 80s, 90s go do ab crunches at the gym and they'd say activate your core and then do the ab crunch. Yes? Because you're kind of supporting yourself by activating your core. You're not like clenching it, but you're going, oh, I'm going to use the abs, engaging the whole area of your abdominals and saying, hey, I'm going to work you. I'm going to play with you. I'm going to engage while I move you. I'm going to contract while I move you in a range of motion. Yes. And so we have, we use supports or bandhas in other places and not even realize that we use them in just regular Western physical exercise and movement. So it's the same thing with your feet and your hands. You have a bandha or a support or lift system in your hands and your feet. And in your hands, it's right in the very ball of your hands. And in your feet, it's the arch of your feet. So if you can activate those bandhas, what they do is they kind of lift off the ground. Lift, and they like zip up. So the bandha in your hand would lift and zip up and activate the rest of your arm and shoulder. And the bandha in your feet lifts up and activates the rest of your legs all the way up into your hips in alignment. And it's also a kinesthetic awareness kind of information, sensory information that tells your body how to align properly and where to engage and where what to contract and what to loosen up and relax and how to find that sweet spot that balance in the pose so in the hands it looks like this you're going to start getting out of just resting the weight in the heel of the hand and start to think about putting your weight in this circle around here so the weight also you're really resting in this would be like the ball of your foot um, but it's the first set of knuckles and then you lift a little bit up through the second set of knuckles, keep them soft and, and, and lift and supportive, and then you grip with those fingertips. You press into those fingertips. So you're connecting here, and you're connecting here, and you're connecting here to the ground, kind of all around this part. And then grip, because we're little monkeys, right? We want to use those little fingertips. We want to get all the way out into our little fingertips. They give us information. They activate muscles. They help with that kinesthetic awareness where we are in time and space so we know before we fall down <laughs> and can correct, auto-correct, or go, oh, we're falling down, and what does this process look like and feel like? And then in your feet, how you activate that bandha is... You come into the heel of the foot and the balls of the foot, and you want to come in and all four, like the base of the big toe, the base of the pinky toe, the base of the heel of the foot. 
and then pick up your toes. And as soon as you pick up your toes, you feel that active activation or that lift through the arch of your foot. And then find that balance between the heels and the toes, drop the toes down, and you can still feel that lift, kind of keeping that lift up through the arch of the foot. And then keep your toes soft and loose. And again, it's that second set of knuckles you're kind of lifting up, and then you're, you're, you can grip in the toes if you fall forward. Or if you fall to the right, I can kind of grip into the right pinky toe. If I'm gonna fall forward, I can grip into my toes and press back off and find that resistant edge of resilience. So I can stay in that balance pose. Our toes are great, great tools to use for balance in our balance postures. But oftentimes what I find in tree poses, people are just stuck in the heels of their feet and the balls of their feet and they're not really engaging in their toes. So I like to, at the beginning of each practice, I'm gonna zoom down here one more time. I like to, at the beginning of each practice that I do, come into my own version of Tadasana before I even start to go into any other standing postures and just play and get in my feet, move to the right, move to the left, see what that feels like, move into the toes, move back into the heels. Really feel what it feels like to engage and activate my entire foot um, from the very tips of the toes all the way back to the heels of the feet. So I know that was a lot of information. You're thinking, how do I incorporate that all in? Two things. Do what I just did. Whenever you're going to go to a yoga class, you're standing up in Tadasana, you can check out for a second. And I say check out, but you're really checking in. And do that little thing where you go around your feet that I just did and, and activate your entire foot and start to feel, oh, I get to play with this range, the whole range from the heels to the toes. And then as you're practicing every pose that you're standing on, just ask yourself, ooh, is my weight to the outer edges of my feet? Or is it more to the inner edges of my feet? Are my knees falling inward? Is it more to my toes? Is it more to the heels? This really is that simple. You're just starting to pay attention in your yoga practice now as to where you're calibrating, how you're calibrating, where you're putting the weight. And then the same things with your hands start to think, oh, can I grip, can I touch, can I press off those tips of the fingertips a little bit to give myself a little bit of activation, support, a little bit of kinesthetic awareness boost, uh, a little bit of balance. And then am I just resting back in the heel of my hand? Can I come forward a little bit here? Oh, what's this, this little lifting, this little bond? I just start playing with those concepts. And that self-inquiry will start to take on a life of its own that only you can give it. We can listen to outside instruction from teachers and they can look at us. I look at students often and I'm like, you look just perfect in that posture. I can't feel internally what's going on in here. I can't get you to activate oftentimes the minute little tiny, tiny little things without you having that mind-body connection. And so really it's just about keeping that mind-body connection, which is one of the tips that I'm gonna to talk to you about in the upcoming episodes, the last four top yoga tips. <laughs> Namaste, you guys. Have a fabulous day.